I made my own calculator. <laughs> um, my ultimate goal is my Commodore retro computer version of this. This guy. This is the prototype. There's a couple things wrong with this. It is a great start. Let's go to the overhead here. This is a 3.7 volt, 2500 milliamp hour battery that is plugged into the RP2040 microcontroller. I have loaded Python code onto this microcontroller that speaks over the I squared C lines. These two short white wires here are the I squared C lines. Let's see if I can get it a little bit closer. You can see SCL and SDA are the two pins that it's coming off of. And then it's going into the SCL and SDA lines on my board that I've designed. Here's the PCB. Let's see if we can get it without some glare here. Okay, so this is the PCB. These are two feather wing slots. Um, they, you can see they're laid out just like the feather uh, layout here. Uh, they are wing slots that I have soldered Adafruit standoffs into. Those standoffs then, you know, once they're soldered, they look like this. I've been able to, let's see if I can pull out one of those. Yep, so I guess I, I might as well show you. I messed one up. One of these two was the first one that I did and I was very careful about doing this correctly the first time. But as you can see on the back here of where I've soldered this is actually where you solder the LEDs. Um, and then over here is where you solder the, the header pins coming out. So if I pull one of these guys off, you can see this, the header pins are supposed to stick up from here. I was very careful to do it right on this one, the first one, and then the very next one, I just did it backwards. You can see over here, these are the pins that you can solder across to change the, the forget what the, the default address is, but the last three digits you can control and get this one out. You will see on this one, I have soldered the A0 across so that the two, these two displays have a different address. Get that back in there. The way this works is there's a chip in here, uh, right in the middle there, labeled U1. That tiny little thing, I will tell you, that was, that was a pain to get on there. You can see my first attempt here. It did not go well. Here's the paste, the flux paste. Terrible stuff. Uh, it smells awful. I had to hold it on there so long that I burned, I burned the board. I didn't even try to use that IC again. I should have done this first, not wasted these. Um, but you know, <laughs> you live and learn, right? That little microchip in there speaks I squared C. And what it does is it's a keyboard reader. So this is a, it can handle a five by five, if I remember correctly, but I have five by four. Um, if I flip this over, you can see all the wires coming off of this and going across. Um, the rows are connected. It will pull the entire grid and it will activate one of these ro rows. And then on the back, you can see I've connected the columns here on the back. If it puts a voltage across one of the rows and then the voltage comes back across one of the columns. It knows that the button is down at the junction of those two row and column. So it will keep track of which buttons are pressed. When I press a button, like the number one here, except that's not number one, oh, but I'll speak. This is number one. So when I press button one, it's going to go around and it's constantly pulling. And I'll press button one, it's going to detect that and it's going to store that event on here as a button press. It stores the down and up event. Then my microcontroller is constantly sending I squared C commands that are asking this controller, hey, do you have any events? And it says no most of the time. But then after I press the one, it says, yes, I have an event. This button in this position uh, was pressed and I have a, a mapping in the code over here that turns that button press and I know that's a one. And then I send other I squared C commands to this display that put the, the digits in the right order on the display. It uses the Adafruit Feather. These are the power lines that, that power both the display and this controller. Um, and this battery will run it for a couple days, I think. It doesn't take that much power. You can kind of see how 
If I put a case around this and made a spot for the battery, I could turn this into a calculator. But a couple of things that I did wrong, um, which is why you do a prototype, right? I'll just pull one of these off. Boom. Originally, I had intended for this to be the, there is a little bracket that you can solder, um, actually solder to the board, and then this snaps into it so you don't have to solder the key directly to the board. I bought a bunch of those, but when I got the board, I realized that the outline that I had used was actually the outline for the keys. So I just, and I couldn't use the solder connection. So I had to instead just solder the keys directly to the board, which was not my most awesome moment. But then I did realize that really I, I'm never gonna wanna pull these off. If I really want to, I can salvage them later, but um, probably won't ever want to. Um, I'll, I'll keep my prototype around for a long time. It's, uh, memories, memories, it's all about the memories. Anyway, that was a mistake, but it's a happy mistake and I think that actually makes this a little bit lower profile. I actually think going forward, I'm going to make keep it, keep it that way. The other thing that I was unsure of that I wouldn't qualify as a mistake, but I really didn't, I didn't know how it was physically gonna play out is the button spacing. I had the dimensions of all these keys and everything, but I feel like these gaps here are too wide for me to practically use. When I'm just typing, I feel like I have to move a little bit too much. If I make them a little bit narrower, it'll feel more like a, a real calculator and more ergonomic and more like the thing I'm aiming for. The other thing I wanna do is also shrink this down because I realized these buttons, there's not a lot of gap here. This is really, really close. The other mistake I made is when I numbered these, I put the numbers of the keys on here. I don't know, can you see that? Yeah, yeah, you can see that. So I started one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That is incorrect. <laughs> That's not how keypads are made. If you look at any standard keypad, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I messed that up. I have programmed this. This is an RP2040. Eventually I want my microcontroller on here for prototyping purposes to get make sure all of this works. I just used, used an RP2040. This works with reverse Polish notation. So if I go um, 10 and then equals, plus, this is the plus equals button, I will just get 10. But then I can press, let's say 12. And then I press plus equals again and it adds it. And so then I add, I don't know, what, 23? That was not 23. I was looking at the numbers. That was 89. <laughs> anyway, it does floating point math, not precise math. If I put pi here, that is pi. And I put enter it loses, it rounds that last digit. It's an imprecise number. When I do the final version of this, I will need to do something more like a, a, a pure decimal math, and I can't rely on the, the floating point operations. Next steps are to make a more final version of the PCB. This is intentionally a prototype board, and you can see it has two spaces for feather wings here. I've just put all of the pins out to this header, which I can then plug into the breadboard so that I can do all my prototyping with it. But it has no space for the, the controller itself. What I'm thinking is, ideally, um, this PCB would be kind of sitting at the top of the enclosure. And then below it, if you can see yeah, below it, there, is, there would be space for a battery, additional feathers that you could plug into here. So on the bottom here, that you can put several different microcontrollers on this board. Which brings me to the realization that I had is that this is actually kind of a really powerful dis design. You could actually fit one, two, three, four, five, six, six rows of two. So this, this board physically could accommodate a two by six grid. That would be a little crowded and probably not what you wanted to do with this kind of design. But what I realized is that my ultimate goal, which is my Commodore retro computer version of this, this guy, this guy takes a um, mini ATX case, mini, mini ATX board. So if I open this up real quick, um, pull this out, put that to the side for now. Move my coffee out of the way. All right, flip it over. All right, see if I can do this without losing all the screws. 
Yay. I haven't lost any screws. Okay. Open this up. I forget the exact dimensions. Here's my plan is that whatever this board dimensions are, I'm just going to make it a grid of these slots. Um, one of those or multiple ones of those will have jumpers on it where they can be uh, microcontrollers. This is my plan for my, uh, my computer. A whole big grid of feather boards go here. Um, I can actually rip this out and put like a, a, another grid of feathers in here. Or actually, um, I forgot, this is where the power supply is going to go. With all of these feathers on here, depending on what they are, they could suck quite a bit of power. So that's kind of roughly my plan. Um, and then on the back of here, I can have IO shields. I'll have a VGA out at, at minimum. I actually want to pull this keyboard off and actually be able to type on this keyboard. <laughs> I need to be able to accept a USB. And I don't know, USB is kind of complicated, even the basic protocol. So I, I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to just do that super easily. So that's the update on this. I'm gonna have this thing before you know it. I still have some really challenging. I'm a little worried about my processor. I think I have some some bugs in, in it. I think it, it is inconsistent in how it's behaving right now. I think I introduced a bug at some point and I need to fix that. Cool. Until next time, this is going to be awesome. But in the meantime, I have a working calculator. Ish. <laughs> cool. Watch out later. And I got to find the screw that I just dropped. Where did it go?